Hello, this is Debbie Crawford with Southern Outdoors, and we are here in LaGrange, Kentucky to check out some haunted issues that they have. Um, this is a really wonderful thing that you might want to bring the kids to. And Barbara Manley is going to tell us more about this. Well, thank you so much, Deborah, for You're coming to LaGrange and uh, wanting to find out a little bit more about why we're so haunted. Um, we tell these stories through the Spirits of LaGrange Ghost Tours, and this is the 13th year yes. for the Spirits of LaGrange Ghost Tours, my 11th year actually leading the tours as a, as a volunteer tour guide. We're all volunteers. The Ghost Tours are part of the Main Street program, which is LaGrange Crossroads. Right. Uh, we were, our other name was uh, Discover Downtown LaGrange, but we've gone back to our original name which is LaGrange right. Crossroads will probably be known as Crossroads but <laughs> all of the uh, all of the proceeds to the ghost tours go toward our facade grants and those are for eligible properties right. in the historic district we help out with paint and some maintenance on uh, on and the that's always buildings. a needed it's always it, a needed thing you know, and to so, keep them up to date and up and to look nice and yeah. keep them restored so, that is one of the things that, w that we do. So not only when you come to the ghost tours are you gonna have fun, but you also get to help preserve part of LaGrange. And that's, that's wonderful, right. so. Yes, so our, our ghost tours, we start at the History Center or the bandstand right next to the History Center this weekend. It's right on 2nd Street. And then we take uh, about a nine block walking tour. Uh, candle lit the guides are dressed in some type of costume <laughs> period attire yes and um you can go on every tour if you wanted and get just a little bit different tour because each guide even though we yes. tell the history the history does not change but each guide's experience might be a little different. So you could take my tour tonight and you could go on someone else's tour next week and get an entirely different tour. Plus, we have new things that happen all the time and there's always something new to tell about which does help to keep our stories right. uh, fresh. Right. And each tour guide has, has a different passion. Mm -hmm. Yours may be the the old general store, another one may mm -hmm. be the old railroad store, but each person has a different passion so they have a little more detail about that area. Right, that's exactly true and we um, we do all of the research, historical research, because a lot of the activity that happens, if you don't know the story, you know this is going on but you don't really know who or why until maybe someone's on the ghost tour and they'll say well my grandfather used to live here and that's why that door won't stay shut <laughs> all of a sudden that activity makes sense yes. uh, or we learn uh, some history Nancy Tice at the Oldham County History Center yes. came up with a wonderful story about the people who used to own the, the previous building where Rails is now. It right. was formerly the Irish Rover 2. And that's on Main Street. On Main Street. For years, we've known that there was a little girl that is there, but we didn't know who she could be. Turns out this story uh, goes all the way back to before that building burned, back to the original building that sat on that site all the way back to the 1850s. So we do now have a name. We believe that story fits the activity that happens there today. So because of that, now we think we know who, who our little right. girl is. And, and people can't just come up to you and tell you a story and say their great uncle did this or that and lived in that building. And then you start telling that story on the tour. You actually take what they tell you and you go back and you research deeds, you research property, you research mm -hmm. owners of businesses that were there. Mm -hmm. And then you verify that that's who lived there and that's the incident that happened. And that could be what's causing the activity. Yes, there is another, uh, very recent uh, story that I uncovered while I was researching the location next door. 
and I was told the story, so I go start doing the research. Right. Well, in doing the research, I discovered that there was a murder. <laughs> and to make it even worse, it was a son who murdered his mother. Uh, all of a sudden, that story or the activity suddenly made perfect sense so that is a story that uh, you will hear about on the ghost tours activity is happening there it's at the Main Street Bourbon and Ale House and that is probably uh, one of the most active locations in town I had an experience there just last year on the ghost tours so again the, the Activity is ongoing, and there are theories as to why LaGrange is so haunted. Uh, one of the theories is we uh, live on top of Five Springs. That's true. And uh, <laughs> yeah. there, uh, with a theory is the rock and the quartz crystal and the limestone and the water can tend to act as a battery. Uh, energy drains or There's draws from that that energy and uh, Albert Einstein said uh, energy does not die it just changes form so something to think about <laughs> something to think about on their way here right <laughs> Now there's also a story about some of the buildings that burned down here and some of the things that happened and you believe that that might be causing activity. Yes, yes. in 1910 Main Street had a devastating fire. It started uh, on the corner where Karen's Book Barn is now located and the buildings all the way up to where the toy store is located right. on that side of the street they all burned. Uh, that was in I think December 1910 and our very first mayor of LaGrange, Carlos McDowell, helped to fight that fire and I think that fire lasted about three days. It, it, it lasted several days. And yes. they had the Louisville Fire Department, uh, several fire departments came here to help fight this fire. And on the morning of the third day he was investigating or checking out the damage and he was standing beside a chimney which was all that was left of Dr. Cassidy's residence which right. would have been right on First Street right behind what's now the corner store and as he was standing there by the chimney a train came down the tracks at a pretty good rate of speed and I believe yes. the vibrations from the train caused the chimney to fall on him oh, wow. and killed him so some think that uh, the old McDowell pharmacy where we go inside that's one of our locations that Carlos is maybe one of the spirits that haunts that location as well. And you know, I like to think, and here's what I usually tell people on the tours, that uh, LaGrange was, is such a great place that nobody ever wants to leave, ever. And those that may be our spirits, when they were alive, they did what they could to help this town. So even now, in spirit, they're still helping this town. And they and they like to visit with the visitors when they come. Occasionally, you you can't predict right. when things will happen, but things do happen. As a matter of fact, just a week ago, I did a tour, and we were in the back of the old pharmacy, which there have been numerous things that have happened in there during the tours. <laughs> Unplanned, unstaged. This is not a haunted house and, and you situation. All not, you all do not make these things happen. We do happen. not make these things happen. And um, last week, uh, there was an experience that two people had while we were inside that building. Oh, and, my goodness. Uh, now, do you all go in all the buildings downtown that are associated with your tour as far as if there's a story about each building, do you go in each one of them or are there no, select ones? No, we do not. We go in uh, because we have sometimes our groups are limited to 15 people, Okay. but because we're trying to get people inside of a location, some of the locations are too small. Yeah. And if we went in every location, we would be there till midnight. So we go inside of... Uh, two locations right now and we stop 
and we're outside of the other locations but that is one thing that does make us unique is we do go inside locations that's that is great now this tour is when How well it's it going last? on now it starts usually uh, the first week of september and right. the last tour is on halloween night and i traditionally like to do <laughs> the last tour on halloween night uh, a couple of other things that we do um, we do uh, once a year a dinner with the spirits so if you want to have a more in-depth experience you can find out more about that on our website we also are have a waiting list for our great ghost stakeout so if you've ever wanted to do a paranormal investigation <laughs> just like on TV uh, we have uh, Chris McGill and his group uh, right. prove paranormal researchers of the Ohio Valley they come out and we uh, we generally charge fifty dollars a person for that and it's limited to 12 people at a time at, 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 uh, on a, any <clears throat> given night that we right. do it so if you are interested in that call the spirit line and have Victoria put you on a waiting list and then we'll let you know we'll determine a date and a place it's generally one of our more haunted locations so we will do that uh, also you can get more information about the dinner with the spirits right. which we haven't set a date for that yet as well where uh, we see who all is interested and then we'll do that um, the tours are eighteen dollars per person. person the dates of the tours and the nights of the tours now it's not every night is it no it's not the tours are going on now until halloween night and i traditionally like to do the last tour on halloween but uh, we go on friday and saturday evenings the cost is eighteen dollars a person and new this year we have online reservations so we're, we're oh, getting so much easier we're getting it? pretty techy with our ghost <laughs> tours so you still have the option you can go to our website spiritsoflagrange.com right. or the number is 502-291-1766 and you can make your reservation with uh, Victoria. She will uh, call you back if you leave a message. We offer group rates if you have a, a, a group of 10 or more and you would like to take a special tour. We do that. Generally that will be on a Thursday night that we will do the private group tours and you do get a, a special rate. We also have a couple of other events that we do uh, generally every year. We have uh, our Great Ghost Stakeout which is an event that if you've ever wanted to do a paranormal uh, investigation just like you see on TV. Yes, and you have special people that come in for that. Yes, Chris McGill, uh, Wave 3, he has a special group called Prove and they will have all of the bells and whistles, the cameras, the EVP meters, yes. the whole bit, and we do the Great Ghost Stakeout. That generally is $50 a person, and we have not set a date, but you call Victoria and get on the waiting list, right. and then we'll set a date for when we do that at one of our more haunted locations. Yes, and in, and that requires a number of people. You don't just do it for one person. Right, that's 12 Once. people. We limit yes. it to 12 people. If you have more than that, that right. it's just too many right. uh, our ghost tours the regular tours are limited to 15 right. people per tour and another event that we do that's been very successful is dinner with the spirits so that is uh, one that we generally will do in February again call the spirit line at 502-291-1766 and get information about those events uh, you could also leave a message through our website I believe, right. if you're interested oh that's great now we need to make sure you also remember that not only are you going to come out and enjoy the ghost tours but while you're here enjoying the ghost tours the money that you're spending also goes towards preserving the facades on some of these old buildings and which is very necessary we all know that an older building does take a lot of pampering and a lot of care in order to keep those. And LaGrange is a very pretty city, so that's uh, 
that's a wonderful thing to keep in mind. And also, if you have nine or ten people that um, you know that are willing to come with you, that's even more fun because, like I said, you get to watch their facial expressions when and if something happens. So <laughs> it, it frequently does. <laughs> now, is there anything else we need to make sure everybody knows about this? I guess just come. You can bring your flashlights. Yes. Uh, you can bring cameras. We encourage... Uh, photographs we do not want video but we do right. encourage photographs and if you get something that you can't explain and sometimes people do uh, let us know give us a, a message either through the website or call and let us know that you've got something you'd like to share with us and and that's always that's nice for other people to see so make sure you do share those mm -hmm. We've been traveling around, visiting different places in our region that are having haunted events during, during the month of October. And today we're here at the Lanier Mansion. We're going to talk with Jerry. He's going to tell us some more things that they've got going on. And what are those, Jerry? Well, we have a lot of things going on in October for the Halloween season. That's one of our most popular times of the year. And so the first one is uh, on October 9th, we're going to do a new program. Uh, we're calling it a ghost walk. And it will start here at the Lanier Mansion. And people will go through the home and we will talk about some of the ghost stories uh, related to the home, like the lady in red and uh, little John James who drowned in the river. And then some other stories that people who used to work here or had to do work here um, have told us about. So. Right. Now, little John James, I remember that story vaguely. Now, who was his father? His father was uh, James F. D. Lanier. He is the person who built the Lanier Mansion in 1844. And actually, the incident that we're talking about was uh, actually happened before the Lanier Mansion was built. The family had an earlier, smaller home right. on the property. And uh, a son named John James, who was seven at the time, uh, took a carriage ride with uh, his older brother, Alexander, who was 16 at the time. And it was the coach, uh, the carriage was driven by a servant. And uh, according to a newspaper account we have, at some point they took the horses into the river to get a drink and the current was strong and the whole carriage was overturned oh. and the servant and the younger son uh, drowned. And the horses drowned. Too, unfortunately. Uh, but Alexander survived that. Um, but the ghost story associated with that is that people claim to see a little boy come out of the river and walk up uh, Elm Street. And uh, it gives me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, if that's, there were many young boys though who did drown in the river, so we can't yeah. be sure it's our boy. But uh, a lot of people think that it is. Oh, wow. Well then, and the next event that you have going on in conjunction with the Lanier Mansion is what? Well, on October uh, 10th, we're having a readings of Al um, Edgar Allan Poe uh, stories. And um, so a, a person named uh, Jeff Keel, who's very good at doing uh, programs like that, will do the dramatic readings. And uh, I've been doing some reading about Edgar Allan Poe. And besides being one of the founders of horror stories, he also was a founder of detective uh, stories. And many, many of his books were popular in the 1840s, so the Lanier Mansion is a perfect setting for that because that is that time period. Right. So it'll, you'll be, people will be hearing the stories in rooms that look like the rooms that he wrote about. Oh my goodness. Is there anything unusual about Edgar Allan Poe that some people don't know or that uh, might be interesting for them? Well, the only thing I know about is that until, I don't know how many years ago, but like for many, many years, someone would leave a bottle of, I can't remember what it was, some alcohol on his grave every year. Oh, my. And uh, for on his birthday, I think. And um, that stopped recently, so they never knew who the person was. They would do it secretly. So. Thank you. We we'll have to go back and see who's passed away in the last six months. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> see if we can narrow it down. Right. Oh, my goodness. Now, um, during Halloween, there's a special thing going on. 
Uh, well, we have other, not on Halloween itself, but we yes. have other programs. We're also doing the Ghost Walk again on uh, October 17th. But on October 16th, we have our Night Spirits program, which we've been doing. This is the ninth one. Uh, and this year, we're calling it uh, Murder Mania. And what we do is we have costumed actors in the home uh, who portray spirits. And they uh, tell true stories of things that happened back in the 19th century. And this year we're doing all true uh, mass murderers oh my goodness. for the 19th century. Right. So that's what they're going to be talking about. And uh, uh, a friend of ours, Wayne Sanford from Indianapolis, writes the scripts for us. He does the research and writes the scripts. And I said they're all true story, but they're, they're told in a very dramatic yes. fashion. So it's a neat thing to do to go through the home. Um, people go on the first floor and the second floor, and then they go end up in the basement. And uh, it's a neat uh, program. Oh, the okay. actors are very good. We have all volunteer actors, and they're all very good. Now, and th do they need to buy tickets for this event? Yes, uh, for all the programs, you need to buy tickets. Mm -hmm. um, especially for the Night Spirits, we recommend that you make reservations because it does fill up. And how that works is we um, start at 7 o'clock on October 16th. And the first group will come over, and then at 7.15, the next group will start, and at 7.30, the next group will start. So you have to make a reservation for a certain time period. Now, there's websites to go to in order to find uh, the prices for the tickets, and what is that? Yes, uh, each program has a, a different price. So go on the uh, website, uh, indianamuseum.org slash Lanier, or you can call uh, me at 812-273-0556. And uh, I'll be glad to give you the information. Oh, that's great. I think you're going to have more people now that they're finding out about all this. And then there's, um, is there one more event that you're having? Yes, uh, we have a program that's geared toward uh, younger children called Spooky Mansion. And so we do a spooky mansion. It's not really a haunted house. We don't have people chasing after you with chainsaws or anything right. like that. This is for younger children. Right. So we put out uh, spooky uh, decorations um, and the children come through the first floor of the house. They also get to go in our basement which is spooky in a normal time <laughs> uh, but we put decorations down there and they trick-or-treat down there and we have a craft for them. Uh, we have storytelling, some ghost stories but again not too scary. Uh, and uh, so um, besides that, we're, this year we're also having a lot of first responders here to hand out right. candy and people can look at their fire trucks or the ambulances and things like that. Now what's and the date for that event? That's uh, October 24th. That's 24th. a Saturday. It starts at 6 o'clock. It goes to 8 o'clock. And people come and just pay and, and uh, uh, all the adults are free for that. We just charge $3 for the children. Well, that, that gives them a little taste of history and maybe they would want to go visit another historical house at some point right. by going through this. And some children are scared and some think it's not scary enough, but we're not trying to cause uh, a lot of nightmares for anybody. Right. Now I know on some of your events there is a thing that states that they can't be under 12 years of age. So they need the parents need to actually check and see how old the children right. can be in order to come to some of the events that you sure. had during October. Uh, Spooky Mansion is for the younger children, yes. like you know, ten years old and younger. Uh, Night Spirits is is designed for adults. We've had some high school students come for that and, and enjoy it, but it's designed for adults, and uh, it's all good, creepy, spooky fun, not. Uh, uh, something that's going to really scare. Not horrible. <laughs> Not horrible, right. right. No horror shows. Right. So that is just great. And do we need to tell everybody anything else about the mansion before we... Well, just that uh, it was built in 1844 by James F. D. Lanier, who was a local banker and investor, did very well, and he moved to New York City, and uh, but during the Civil War he lent the state uh, over a million dollars and uh, back when a million dollars was a lot of money. Oh, yeah. And some of it he wasn't even sure he was going to be repaid, so he did a very patriotic thing. So he's a great uh, leader from our community, and so it's a great home to see any time of the year. But uh, in October, it's special. That's great. Well, make sure you check out the website, check out the dates for the events they're having during the month of October, 
and make it, make it out by all means. Um, I think you'll enjoy the tour. The, the Lanier Mansion is beautiful here, and it is located next to the river. So when you come to Madison, if you just go down to the river and you follow Vaughn Drive, you will find the Lanier Mansion. And um, is there anything else we need to tell them about the mansion before we let them go? Uh, can't think of anything. Okay. Well, this is Debbie Crawford, Southern Outdoors, and thank you for watching.